In this example, we want to use a graph to find delta. It's important to be able to read this information and translate what each piece means in terms of the graph. First of all, 2. 2 is the A value that we're going to be approaching, so x is approaching 2. The square root of x squared plus 5, that is our function, f. 3 is the limit that we are approaching as x approaches 2, and point 3 is epsilon. That's the region around our limit of 3. So let's go to the calculator and graph this. ny equals, we'll type in our equation and graph. Now we can do it from here, just the normal settings, but it might be beneficial to zoom in a little bit to get a better picture of what's happening. So let's go to the window and set our x min to just 0 so we can see the y axis. And the x max, we want to make sure that 2, our x value that we're focusing on, is within that window. So let's maybe make it 4 so that 2 is in the middle. And our y min, again, let's make it 0 so that we can see the axis. And the y max, we just want to make sure that it is going to include 3. And then we also want to include 0.3, our epsilon window around 3. So let's maybe make our x max at 4. And now graph. And so we have a slightly better picture of what's going on. So next we'll draw a quick sketch just to get some labels on what we're looking for. So here we have 2. And four, just label some pieces here. First of all, we know that as x approaches 2, the limit is 3. And then our graph looks something like this. Again, just very rough sketch. We need to find the delta. So again, delta is going to be on the left and the right of the 2 that we're focusing on here. The epsilon window 0.3 is the window or the region around 3. So we'll have 3.3 and 2.7 around our limit of 3. And that's probably good enough. We can use this information now to help us find delta. And remember, delta is this region around 2. So we'll have delta 1 and delta 2. We need to find the smaller of those. And these are x1 and x2. Next, let's focus on finding x1. When y is equal to 2.7, we're looking at this point here, we're finding x1. So when y is equal to 2.7, let's plug that into the equation square root of x squared plus 5 and solve. So here I'll go to the calculator to help. So we need to square both sides. 2.7 squared is 7.29. Then we'll subtract 5 to get 2.29 and then we want to take the square root of 2.29 and that's going to give us roughly 1.51 and I'm going to store this value in the calculator to do that we'll go to STO and we can store it in any letter I'll just choose alpha A so alpha A enter and now that value is stored in alpha a so that we can recall it later when we need it next we'll find x2 and the way we find x2 again we're going to use y2 or 3.3 so we'll know we have x2 when y is equal to 3.3 so plugging that y value into our function 3.3 is equal to the square root of x squared plus 5. Square both sides. 
3.3 squared is 10.89. Then we want to subtract 5, and then we can take the square root of 5.89. And so here we get x2 is roughly equal to 2.43. And I'm going to store that value in B. So store in alpha B so that we know where it is later when we need it. Now we can find delta. Delta 1, again here, is 2 minus x1, which we will use in the calculator. So 2 minus that stored value was A. It gives me 0 0.4867254050. I'll write down all of those for now. Delta 2 is x2 minus 2. x2 we stored in B, so alpha B minus 2 gives us. 0 0.4269322199. And remember, delta is the smaller of those two numbers. And it looks like delta 2 is the smaller. So 0 0.426932. And let's stop there. We'll round to six decimals. Be sure to read directions on any assignment to know where to round.